Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing lipoproteins and the transportation of lipids around the body. Okay, right. So we have now discussed what happens when you have just eaten. Okay, so if you've just eaten a meal that contains fats, what happens is the intestine will digest and absorb these fats, and they will end up being put in this type of lipoprotein called a kinomicron. These kind of microns will go into the blood and basically they deliver triacylglycerol molecules to peripheral tissues such as the adipocytes and also the myocytes such as skeletal myocytes and cardiomyocytes. Okay, now that's what happens within the fed state. These kind of microns now will eventually run out of triacylglycerol and they'll become uh, very high in cholesterol and cholesterol esters and uh, also phospholipids. And eventually, what will then happen is these kind of micron remnants will uh, go to the liver and they'll be removed by the hepatocytes and broken down. Okay, right. Now, that pathway. Of, by which we can feed the cardiomyocytes and the skeletal myocytes with fat during the fed state is called the exogenous pathway. Okay, because the fat that we are getting to feed our myocytes with is from exogenous sources. Okay, we now need to discuss what's going to happen when you are not in the fed state. Okay, so when you are fasting, how do we continue to supply triacylglycerol molecules to uh, the uh, cardiomyocytes and also the skeletal myocytes? Because remember, those are using the free fatty acid molecules that you get by breaking down the triacylglycerols uh, by lipoprotein lipase uh, for energy sources, basically. So we want that energy source to remain there. So we now need to discuss, in the fasting state, this exogenous pathway isn't going to be able to occur. So we now need to say what's going to happen in the fed, uh, sorry, the fasting state. Okay, and this next pathway is called the endogenous pathway because the source of the lipid molecules is now going to be an endogenous source rather than an exogenous source. Okay, so this is how we're going to top up our supply of triacylglycerols to the cardio and skeletal myocytes in a fasted state. Okay, right. So fundamentally, where are we going to get lipid molecules from? Well, the answer is obvious. We have to get them from the adipocytes. In the fed state, we have been supplying the adipocytes with uh, lipid molecules to bump up their stores. So now what we're going to do is take them out again. So basically, what happens is the endogenous pathway starts with the adipocytes. Okay, certain hormones can stimulate uh, the adipocytes to start breaking down um, their triacylglycerols, which they store within this massive lipid store in the center, into free fatty acids. Okay, so basically, what's going to start happening is in the fasted state, these adipocytes are going to start releasing free fatty acids into the blood and they release them directly into the blood. They don't have to put them into uh, lipoproteins. They just release them directly into the blood. So this is in the fasted state, okay? You're going to start getting the adipocytes releasing the uh, free fatty acids from their triacylglycerol molecules uh, into the blood. So let me just color in this triacylglycerol molecule. Here are the free long chain carboxylic acids and here is the glycerol molecule. Okay, so these free fatty acid molecules which go into the blood, they will bind to albumin which is within the blood, okay? So here is a protein that is within the blood plasma called albumin. And the free fatty acids that are being released by the adipocytes into the blood will bind to albumin. Okay, and now what happens is that the free fatty acids attached to albumin will circulate within the bloodstream and then they'll eventually be taken out by hepatocytes. Okay, so let me show the liver here. Okay, and within the liver you have hepatocytes 
And what's going to happen is these hepatocytes are going to be the first people, or the first cells, to receive these free fatty acids that have been released by the adipocytes. So basically, the free fatty acids that go into the blood, those don't go directly to the peripheral tissues. Uh, so they're not directly going to feed the uh, skeletal myocytes or the cardiomyocytes. Instead, they first have to go to the liver. The liver will then package them into lipoproteins, and the lipoproteins will then go off and feed the skeletal and cardiomyocytes. Okay, so these free fatty acids are going to go into the liver. So here they are. So this is supposed to represent a hepatocyte within the liver. Okay, this little box that I've got here. So this is a hepatocyte. And now what's going to happen is that the liver is going to use these free fatty acids to make triacylglycerol molecules, and then it will package the triacylglycerol molecules into another type of uh, lipoprotein. And this next type of lipoprotein is going to be called very dense lipoprotein. Okay, so remember, very dense lipoprotein was only just smaller than the chylomicrons. These are, again, big, big lipoproteins. So uh, 28, sorry, not 20, 28 uh, to 70 nanometers in diameter. Okay, so remember, as with all lipoproteins, the outer surface will be made up of this phospholipid monolayer, which is usually made up mainly of phosphatidylcholine or lecithin molecules. And of course, the hepatocytes have a plentiful supply of that. They've got loads of that. Um, okay, so here is the phospholipid monolayer. And then within the mo monolayer, what you have are these apolipoproteins. Okay, so let's color these apolipoproteins in, and then let's discuss which apolipoproteins you generally find in very low-density lipoproteins. Okay, so this is a very low-density lipoprotein, a VLDL molecule. Okay, so this stands for very low-density lipoprotein. Okay, and basically the apolipoproteins which you have within very low density lipoproteins uh, include uh, apolipoprotein B100. Okay, so this is one of the very important ones that you're going to have later. As we'll see, this only becomes important right at the end. Okay, then one that you should be able to guess now. Okay, we've we want to deliver. Um, triacylglycerols to skeletal and cardiomyocytes. How did the chylomicrons deliver uh, triacylglycerols to the skeletal and cardiomyocytes? Well, they required the activity of the lipoprotein lipase that was on the surface of the endothelial cells uh, of the capillaries which are within those tissues. Okay, uh, well, to activate the lipoprotein lipase, you needed apolipoprotein C2 on your surface. So we're going to need apolipoprotein C2. Other examples of apolipoproteins which you find uh, on the surface of uh, very low density lipoproteins are also apolipoprotein C1 and apolipoprotein C3. And then finally, you also find uh, apolipoprotein E also on the surface of very low density lipoproteins. So we have all three of the apolipoprotein Cs, we have apolipoprotein B100, and then apolipoprotein E as well. So we have a good mixture of apolipoproteins on the surface of very low density lipoproteins. Okay, now, uh, again, in the centre of the very low density lipoprotein, you will have triacylglycerol molecules. So here we have our little drawing, so the free long chain carboxylic acids, all the styrified to the alcohol groups of the glycerol molecule, and you'll also have within there cholesterol esters. So it will also put cholesterol esters into there. And finally, you'll also have cholesterol molecules uh, within uh, the phospholipid monolayer of the lipoprotein at the outer edge here. Okay, right. And those can sit there, remember, because they have that polar alcohol group that can face the external uh, watery world. 
Okay, right. So, the adipocytes have been stimulated to break down their triacylglycerols and release free fatty acids into the blood. The free fatty acids bind to albumin and then are delivered to hepatocytes. Okay, so the skeletal and cardiomyocytes cannot just take the free fatty acids that are released by the adipocytes directly out of the blood. They need them to be packaged up into lipoproteins uh, by the liver. And the type of lipoprotein that the liver is going to package them into is very low density lipoproteins. So, what's now going to happen is the liver will put these very low density lipoproteins into the blood and these very low density lipoproteins will circulate until they too come across the endothelial cell of a capillary within a uh, cardiomyocyte rich region or a uh, skeletal myocyte rich region okay so until they come across some cardiac tissue or some skeletal muscle tissue they will circulate within the bloodstream and then of course when they find uh, the skeletal muscle tissue or the cardiac tissue then they will come into contact with these endothelial cells which then have these lipoprotein lipase homodimers on their surface okay and remember they, the lipoprotein lipase homodimers are themselves attached to dimers of GPI anchored high density lipoprotein binding protein 1, GPI HBP1, which are attached to the outer uh, layer of the phospholipid bilayer of these endothelial cells via glycosyl phosphatidylinositol molecules. Okay, so here is our lipoprotein lipase homodimer here. And again, just as with the kylomicrons, what will happen is this will stick itself into uh, the phospholipid monolayer of the very low density lipoprotein, like so. Okay, and the lipoprotein lipases will then bind to uh, apolipoprotein C2s, which I'll denote in blue, I think. So these are the apolipoprotein C2s, and they will then be activated, and again they will break down the triacylglycerols into two monoacylglycerols and then two free fatty acids, which will leave the uh, very low density lipoprotein and diffuse across the endothelium layer and into the interstitial fluid, where they will go off and um, supply the cardiomyocytes and also uh, the skeletal myocytes. Okay, so let's label up the components of this picture then. So here we have our apolipoprotein C2 once again. Here we have our lipoprotein lipase, our LPL. Okay, and uh, here we have our glycosyl phosphatidylinositol anchored HDL binding protein 1. Right, okay, so that's how we deliver uh, fat to our skeletal and cardiac muscle cells when we are in the fasted state and therefore don't have a large supply of lipids coming from the intestine in the form of chylomicrons. Now, what's going to happen is these very low density lipoproteins, just as with the chylomicrons, they too are going to become depleted of their triacylglycerol stores. So the amount of triacylglycerol that is within the core of these uh, very low density lipoproteins is gradually going to fall as they give it away to skeletal and cardiac muscle tissue. Okay, what then happens is they uh, gradually convert into uh, something called intermediate density lipoprotein, which wasn't one of the lipoproteins that I initially mentioned because it's kind of more minor. So as they uh, lose their uh, triacylglycerol, they will obviously shrink down, okay, and then they become what's known as IDL, okay, which is called intermediate density lipoprotein. 
Now, intermediate density lipoprotein still has some triacylglycerols um, left within it, so it isn't fully useless yet. So, what will ha now happen is it will continue to circulate and uh, it will continue to uh, bind to endothelial cells with the lipoprotein lipase uh, on their surface, and you'll continue to get triacylglycerols removed from these intermediate lo density lipoproteins. Okay, right. Then what will happen is the intermediate density lipoproteins, they will gradually lose more and more of their triacylglycerols and they will finally convert into LDL. Okay, so once you have really lost all of your triacylglycerols, you are now called an LDL molecule, okay, for low density lipoproteins. So basically, all this intermediate density lipoprotein is, is an intermediate between very low density lipoprotein, which has a huge amount of triacylglycerol molecules within its core, and then the low density lipoprotein, which has very few triacylglycerols uh, within its core. Okay, right. So, these LDL molecules then have very, very low levels of um, triacylglycerols within their core. And what they have very high levels of are cholesterol esters and cholesterol. And this is why people often just refer to LDL as cholesterol. Okay, this is why the media of often just calls this cholesterol because even though it's actually a lipoprotein and has a phospholipid monolayer, it has apolipoproteins and it has. Um, cholesterol esters and cholesterol as well, um, because it's got a very, very high concentration of cholesterol within it, it often is just referred to as cholesterol. Okay, right, and we'll continue this discussion of LDL in the next video.